I'm Antonio Centeno. I'm the founder of Real Men Real Style. Today, I'm going to be speaking with you about the chukka boot. I'm going to be talking about the history. I'm going to talk about the features that help you identify a chukka boot when you're out there shopping. And I'm going to talk about how to wear a chukka boot, how to fit it into your wardrobe. Now, before I get into this, I want to thank Paul Evans. Paul Evans sent me a pair of chukkas, which I've been wearing, and I can tell you that this is a company that really pays attention to the detail. So on this chukka boot, we've got a beautiful handcrafted calf leather right here on the upper. It's been Blake stitched. It's got a leather sole, handmade in Italy. All the classics, I mean, very well made. I've been wearing these shoes now for a couple weeks and very impressed with the build. So go check out Paul Evans. I'm going to talk about them and I'm going to show images in the support article, but I can tell you the prices that these guys are charging. Well, I've talked with the founders about this. I think that they're undercharging and that you guys should go check them out before they decide to raise their prices. Because really, this stuff right here and this company has been around for almost two years. They're still trying to make their way and get the brand known out there. And uh, I can see these guys knocking the price up because the quality is second to none. So go check them out, Paul Evans. Okay, so we're going to talk about the history. Chukka. It's not chuka. It's not, uh, yeah, it's chukka. And that comes, out, it's a rugby term. And that helps understand, it, it's important to understand that because it actually has a British history, a British North African history. So the story is, is that we had troops deployed during World War II into North Africa. They show up, they've got their regular combat boots. Now, they had come out of England, and let's just say those boots that they had maybe were for cold weather, mud, maybe for trudging, going through France and that kind of stuff, but they were not made for the North African deserts. They had sand issues, and it was really irritating their feet. So apparently, some of the guys went over to cobblers right there in Cairo, and they said, this is what we want. We want something that's going to fit closer to the ankle. It's not going to allow sand in. It's going to be lighter weight so that we can move through this environment. And that's where the chukka came from. So first thing, let's talk about the height of the chukka. It's not going to be as high. We're going to see it's going to come up right and cover the ankle. It's not going to go higher above that. In addition, it's made to fit closer around the ankle so sand doesn't get up in there. So the original material in the upper, we would see leather because leather was pretty common at that time, but we would also see suede and variations of leather. Now the sole, rubber is become a lot more common. And if you think about for a boot and durability and being able to bounce around, that's going to see the more casual chukkas, but leather soles are common as well, especially in dress chukkas. Now the front part very simple. We're not really going to see any type of embroidery, any type of uh, cap toes. You will see that occasionally, but I'm going to say it's overall a pretty casual look. So you can notice how right here we've got the it's you know the uh, attachment on the upper slap right on here. We've got one, two eyelets. You'll occasionally see three eyelets. If you start to see five to six eyelets, that's probably more of a boot than it is a chukka. Also, the heel. Usually, chakras are going to have shorter heels. These weren't really for riding a horse where we see a lot of other boots come out of. These are more for trudging through sand, for going on troop movements, and that focuses on and really helps you understand the history of the chukka. So we've talked about the history. We've talked about the build and how that goes into it. Now let's start to talk about how do you wear these. Okay, so the ones I just showed you made from leather with a leather upper, leather lower, in a dark brown, you're going to see them in black, maybe ox blood. Those are going to look great with a sports jacket, odd trousers, with khakis, with uh, gray flannel trousers. They're really going to look nice. But the great thing about that is you could still wear these leathers with a dark pair of well-fitted jeans. So what does that tell you about the chukka? Incredibly versatile. This is not going to be something, though, that you're going to want to wear with a suit. You could pull it off with a suit. And I think the reason you can do that, especially if you have a plain lower, is that this would be covered if you're wearing these let's say you had a black pair or you're wearing these with a navy and you're wearing with the browns, you could probably pull this off in the United States, especially maybe in smaller towns. However, you're in a larger city like New York or London, I'm going to recommend you don't do that. Uh, and you know, a lot of that plays to the casual nature of the chukka. Now, we've also talked about suede. You're going to see chukkas in gray suede, tan, uh, and tan was the original color of the boot. Um, so when you see something like that, that's going to be more casual. It's going to be harder to wear with dress slacks or anything like that, but it's going to be perfect for jeans, especially if you decide to go with lighter color jeans uh, or jeans that are a little bit distressed, you could still pull off a pair of chakras with them. All right, guys, 
What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below here on YouTube and go check out Paul Evans. I've created an entire article. I think the thing's well over a thousand words. Go into a lot more detail about the Chaka boot with tons of images. Go check it out. It's going to be over at Real Men Real Style. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.